Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Adventures for the Curious. If you haven't already, please subscribe and click the notifications button so you can get updates whenever I post a new video. My name is Mindy, and today I'm going to talk about something that some will find controversial, but it's something that I believe needs to be addressed. The Cult of Forrest Fenn. The word cult summons disturbing images of brainwashed people following their leader blindly toward inevitable doom. Jim Jones, David Koresh, Marshall Applewhite of Heaven's Gate, and L. Ron Hubbard of Scientology are all well-known cult leaders who have deceived many people. Many people have even died in their pursuit of the enlightenment those cult leaders offered. When you hear the devastating stories of those who have escaped such cults, you can't help but wonder how they could be led to believe such obvious baloney in the first place. Well, the mind exerts a powerful influence over your actions and beliefs, and successful cult leaders have learned how to manipulate minds in such a masterful way that you don't even realize you're being led astray. Intelligent people are not exempt from this type of manipulation, as you'll see in this video. Although many cults involve false religion, not all of them fall into that category. Today we're going to take an in-depth look into a cult of another kind. Now, for the controversy. Ready? I am. Let's go. Forrest Fenn is a very wealthy retired fighter pilot and art dealer who allegedly hid a treasure worth more than $2 million somewhere north of Santa Fe in the Rocky Mountains sometime in 2010. He wrote a memoir titled The Thrill of the Chase and told the public on several different media outlets that the book contained a poem which contained nine clues that, if followed precisely, would lead a lucky finder to the treasure. On June the 5th of this year, Forrest Fenn announced the treasure has been found and retrieved, but he refuses to provide any information regarding the answers to the clues or as to who found it, simply releasing a press release through the Treasure Hunt's official forum, DaleNeitzel.com. Additionally, he has now confirmed the treasure was found in Wyoming. About the searcher, all Forrest has said is that he didn't know him and that he was from back east. The aftermath resulting from the end of the chase has resulted in chaos in the search community, and at least one searcher sadly committed suicide when Forrest dropped the bombshell press release. The announcement left searchers confused and unable to find closure for it seems as though they will never know if their hard work and countless hours spent attempting to solve the poem brought them even close to finding it themselves. They will never know how close they were to solving the poem, and searchers are justifiably upset. For the most part, I eased back from the chase about a year ago because of disturbing things I'd learned about Forrest and disturbing things I was experiencing from other searchers obsessed with all things Forrest Fenn. I publicly published that Forrest Fenn had, either accidentally or purposefully, created nothing short of a cult, and a dangerous cult at that. I stand by that assertion more than ever now as I witness the end of the chase. Before we delve into this hotly debated topic, let's take a look at the definition of a cult. An instance of great veneration of a person, ideal, or thing especially as manifested by a body of admirers, or a group or sect bound together by veneration of the same thing, person, ideal, etc. For those of you familiar with the thrill of the chase, do you see any similarities between those definitions and the community of searchers involved in this treasure hunt? This treasure hunt supposedly created to give people hope? Now, from here on out, I'm going to provide facts that support my theory that many of the searchers of this infamous treasure were, and still are, members of this cult, many without even realizing it. Forrest stated he created the chase in part to give hope in a time of economic recession. In a Huffington Post article by Margie Goldsmith in 2013, Forrest says, This is going to get me in trouble, but I have to say it. The following words have nothing to do with the treasure chest I hid. Searching for hidden treasures in the mountains is enjoyable. It brings families together. It promotes bonding. During rough economic times, it, the treasure hunt, provides hopes and dreams where otherwise they might be lacking. Wait, what? 
Those words have nothing to do with the treasure chest? Is he saying there's some other purpose it serves? Then, a year later, in a February 2014 article written by, and I know I'm going to br probably butcher this name, Anne Kane, entitled, There's a Fortune Hidden Somewhere in the Rocky Mountains and This Millionaire is the Only One Who Knows Where It Is, Forrest again says, I wanted to give people hope and something to believe in. In 2014, Ben told an interviewer on Dateline, and listen to this carefully, I love the fact that I'm the only one who knows where it is, and that I started the fire under the imagination of hope of a lot of people. Did you get that? Who do cult members follow? They follow someone who supposedly holds a higher knowledge and offers hope. But then says here, the imagination of hope. What does that even mean? Is he in fact saying that it's a false hope? Not likely to be realized? Is he saying that the hope searchers feel is just their imagination? Sure sounds like it. Combine that with his quotes where he said he's fine with the treasure not being found for a thousand years. And we begin to see a shadow looming on the edge of the shining pure character of Forrest Fenn that he has led people to believe in. In an interview on New Zealand Radio in 2019, Forrest admits that in regards to someone finding the treasure, you know, I'm not thinking about spring break or a Sunday afternoon picnic looking for the treasure chest. I'm thinking 100 years from now or 1,000 years from now. So, if he hid the treasure chest thinking it wouldn't be found for at least 100 years, how does that mesh with his hiding the chest to provide hope? Okay, so now we've established that Forrest said he created the chase to give people hope, yet also didn't think it would be found for at least a hundred years. Hmm. Now, let's take a look at the hallmarks of a cult. The leader is a sole authority. Cults are formed when a charismatic person claims some kind of privileged or supreme knowledge. In Forrest Fenn's case, he may have primed the searcher's subconscious by including this iconic photo of himself on the inside back leaf of the dust jacket of his memoir, The Thrill of the Chase. Forrest certainly knew what he was doing by cropping this photo in this way. It is distinctly reminiscent of historical artistic depictions of saints and holy people. We know Forrest is aware of this because he has posted about his interest in Russian iconography as well as other religious artifacts and art. Anyone familiar with the forms created specifically for this treasure hunt know how often it's said, if Forrest didn't say it publicly, it's not true. Questioning Forrest's character will also earn you a swift, merciless attack, even if your questions and concerns are valid. A few women have come forward speaking about Forrest's inappropriate behavior with them. These women were then crucified on and banned from the forums, sent death threats via anonymous emails, and subjected to harassment, ridicule, and outright libel. I know of many women who have had similar experiences with Forrest but are too frightened to come forward because they have seen how anyone who questions Forrest's character are treated. Take a listen to an excerpt of an excellent podcast I recently listened to when researching this video. This guy is pretty good, and I'll link his channel in the description. And then the last, like, minute, I'm like, I think it's a hoax. I don't think he really buried it. I think he just wanted people to read his memoir. And I think people's biggest fear is leaving the world with no legacy. But I got some very, very stiff resistance to the Forrest Finn story. I, I got a lot of pushback on that one. Now, I'm a big boy, I can take criticism, whatever. But the force and the amount of feedback I got on that one in a very, very short amount of time was startling. I, how dare I insult their leader? How dare I question the word of such an honorable man? Do I have proof that he didn't bury the treasure? If I don't have proof, then I can't say how Dare, dare I question the word of a man who honorably served our country. I am nothing. I am a couch potato. I think they called me that. Is that even still a word? But anyways, it was startling. Now, I've gotten pushback on other videos before. Generally, I can expect it coming. Anti-cosmic Satanism, I got a little bit of pushback on. And that was expected because I was like, I'm talking about someone's belief system. I'll probably get some pushback. And they did. They called me an idiot and said I should get punched in the head. And that was it. A couple comments over the course of six weeks and that's when i realized something 
This isn't a treasure hunt. This is a cult. The cult of Forest Finn. They believe in him so much that the second anyone questions it, especially an outsider, they come out with knives ready. It was incredibly bizarre. Wow, but isn't he totally right? I mean, it's undeniable that this happens. The proof is literally all over the forums. It is also well known that Forrest Fenn has appointed certain leaders in the chase. I know this because I was once one of them. To these leaders, he promises benefits such as television and documentary appearances and other perks. For me, it was books. As long as I forfeited all of my critical thinking and excused his bad behavior and defended him against those who would question him, I would receive books. He learned of my great love for books early on, and eventually I was promised the very first copy of the Gaspard book as it came off the printer. I did eventually receive that book. He also offered me TV and documentary appearances, but I turned most of those down. So, some of these leaders are still in power today, and if they want to keep the authority they have, they must defend Forrest Fenn at any cost. They are also the ones you'll find praising Forrest the most. To them and members of this cult, it doesn't matter how much evidence is presented to the contrary, Forrest Fenn is always right. When the evidence continues to mount, these leaders go into destroy mode and will start working behind the scenes to utterly destroy the reputation of those who say anything against the object of their worship. Which leads me to number two. Cults delegitimize its former members. Cult members don't like anyone to leave, since most who leave have discovered the truth and are disenchanted with the whole thing. So in order to protect Forrest Fenn's integrity, cult members perpetuate a false narrative that former members were bitter, with sour grapes, angry, dishonest, or immoral. In the case of Forrest Fenn's cult, I experienced this firsthand. From the beginning, this chase was a hobby for me. I worked on the poem and clues in my spare time for fun. I was never obsessed with finding the treasure, and it said several times I probably wouldn't. I live on the other side of the country, and I couldn't abandon my responsibilities to my mother, who has since passed away, and my children. When I learned about what was going on behind the scenes in this chase, and was positive other women had experienced what I had, I spoke out. The blowback was immediate, and many members attempted to shun me. A few hateful people even began to fabricate complete lies and spread them as fact, and continued to do so even after I had proven that they were lying. And amazingly, they still are. <laughs> that, according to experts who study cults, is exactly what cults do. They will do anything to deflect negative attention away from their leader, and instead work to make the former member look like the one who played foul. The group shames anyone who veers from the path of the object of their devotion. Cult leaders trap members in shame cycles by imposing abnormally strict codes of conduct. Forums have both written and unwritten rules. They won't outright say you will be banned for questioning Forrest Fenn, but you absolutely will, as many have experienced. In my experience, I've found if you question Forrest's character on a forum, you will be immediately attacked. If you defend yourself, you will inevitably be banned for creating drama. Let's listen to another portion of the Dead Rabbit Radio podcast. It is a cult. If you question it, you are immediately castigated for it. If you are an outsider, you're a non-believer. See, I had to prove that the treasure wasn't buried. It wasn't up to them to prove that it was. And that's, that's child logic. I don't have to prove that Santa Claus doesn't exist. You have to prove to me that he does. You're making the extraordinary claim that an 80-year-old man carried a heavy bronze box full of gold and jewels that he's accumulated over the years and hid it somewhere, not buried it, hid it, and it's never been found. You have to prove to me that that exists. But the cult is so ingrained in this group that any insult to their dear leader is taken as the insulter just is morally deficient. The leader is above the law. (laughs) 
Well, I always thought I deserved a throne. Cult leaders like Forrest Fenn exploit their followers. When I first started emailing Forrest Fenn, he would send out what I call dealer emails, where he questioned me about my relationships and life in general to see if I was the type of woman he could successfully take advantage of. I'm not going to go into the details of my experience, for here is neither the time nor place for that. But I will say that I acquired a great deal of proof over the years that I believe will be revealed when the time is right. Cult leaders, when confronted with their impropriety, will not confess, but will deflect or redirect attention. When I confronted Forrest publicly, he countered with a scrapbook on Dale Neitzel's blog, which he titled, Compensations for Being Quiet. At the time, everyone who was active on the forums realized that scrapbook was directed at me. One article I read while researching cults said devoted cult members will perform mental gymnastics to justify or ignore the leader's behavior, which is exactly what happened when I exposed how Forrest Fenn behaved behind the scenes. No matter how much evidence I presented, they claimed it was either photoshopped or that Forrest's email was hacked or that the evidence simply didn't exist, choosing not to read it. Yes, that's true. I've offered several of these cult members access to my email account to read the entire chain of emails between me and Forrest Fenn, and they either said no or evaded the offer altogether. They didn't want to know the truth because it would ruin the chase for them. The leader uses thought reform methods. Well, we're speaking today with the treasure hider and uh, definitely a guru to many, many treasure seekers, Mr. Forrest Fenn. Now, at one point you said, and it's written on one of your bells, it doesn't matter who you are. It only matters who they think you are. So Forrest, who are you and who do people think you are? I hope nobody ever finds out. Ah, the real Forrest Finn. I believe in karma and some of those things. I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I'm probably the most spiritual person around. Forrest uses thought reform methods to indoctrinate his followers. You think that sounds crazy? Well, what is indoctrination? It's repetition. Forrest uses repetition to indoctrinate his followers to his way of thinking. How often is the phrase, it's not who you are, it's who they think you are, repeated? It's repeated way too often all the time. How many members have really thought about that quote and what it means? How many choose to ignore how troubling that quote really is? Typically, cult leaders will repeat phrases over and over to imprint them into his follower's mind, thereby preventing them from critically analyzing complex issues. The leader demands secrecy. I can't tell you how many times Forrest has asked me to keep his secrets, or to keep our conversations a secret, or to keep my visits a secret. He has told me not to talk to other female searchers, accusing them of making up lies about him. It is beyond bizarre how he demands secrecy all the time, but I shouldn't be surprised because that's the key trait of a cult leader. Sadly, several of Forrest's followers do have a lot to lose if Forrest's behavior is ever made public, and therefore they double down in defending him. Many have participated in activities that would potentially destroy their families, and Forrest knows this and uses it to his advantage. This is the way a typical cult operates, people. Forrest has been shady from the start and is quite proud of using his wordplay to throw the fact that he is indeed a fraud into searchers' faces without them even realizing it. In fact, he words things in a way that entices his followers to believe the opposite, that he is basically a saint that can do no wrong. Even Dale Neitzel, Forrest's highest-ranked official, warns potential members of the cult of Forrest's dubious wordplay. The owner of the official Chicks website cautions us to pay close attention to Forrest's words because he is often not saying at all what you think he is. Wow! Just wow! That's probably the only instance of a cult leader warning potential cult members of what they're becoming involved in. The media has recently picked up on the cult-like aspects of this treasure hunt, 
More than a couple articles have noted cult-like aspects, such as the Fen Shrine. So every year, there's a Fenbury where fanatics camp out together to admire Forest Fen and share stories of their experiences. I don't see a problem with the gathering of friends, and I have enjoyed the two Fenburys I've attended. The Shrine of Fen is the centerpiece of the gathering, where searchers leave offerings to Forest. Then there's the aptly named Saturday Church of the Search, a YouTube program put on by longtime searcher Toby Eunice. Before I conclude, I'd like to play one more clip from Dead Rabbit Radio's podcast. Take a listen. So I found a list of signs of a cult. And out of the 15 signs, this group has nine. The group displays excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader. Questioning doubt and dissent are discouraged or even punished. The group is elitist, claiming a special exalted status for itself. See, they're smarter than us. A lot of times on the websites, they'll be like, people who don't believe us just think that they're smarter than the clues. They should be able to find it. If they can't find it, then, then it doesn't exist. No, it doesn't exist because it doesn't exist. The group has a polarized us versus them mentality. Yeah, that's true. Subservience to the leader or group requires members to cut ties with friends and families. Not so much, but, and radically alter the personal goals and activities they had before joining the group. Go to the Reddit thread for Forrest Fenn. It's crazy. People plan their lives and they'll be like, oh, I was up so late looking at my new Assolve. That's what they call it. Like, I was looking at my Solve and people will post their, like, hey, I think I know what this part of the clue is. And they're like, oh, you're an idiot. You don't know who that is. It's this real insular group. And they, they'll talk about, man, I've wasted so much time. Sorry, not wasted. I've spent so much time. Well, I think it's waste, but I spent so much time working on this and blah, blah, blah. <sighs> so sad. The group is preoccupied with making money is another sign of a cult. I, I, and I think that's the interesting point is that Forrest Finn is a cult leader, but he's not selling you eternal salvation. He's not a religious cult leader in that sense. He's selling you salvation here. He is telling you that if you believe in him and follow his word, you can have millions of dollars. You fall, you you think that I'm a smart person, I can never fall for such hokum. And then someone sells you something and it makes you double down because you've already spent your time and your money and you believe in him so much, you can't question it because if you question it, you're questioning the last eight years of your life. I just thought it was interesting because again, I didn't, th- I, I, it was a, it was, it, it, it was a starter story. It was a story I was like, ah, oh, this will be a fun thing to talk about. And it exposed something dark and raw in a lot of people. So, with no rewards for searchers' efforts forthcoming, no confirmations that a chest was even ever hidden, no revelations of how close searchers were or weren't, People are feeling cheated and empty. That is one very sad hallmark of a cult. When the leader ultimately fails them and the realization hits that things were never as they seemed, there's nothing left but an empty, hollow shell. Everything they had invested their hearts, minds, and souls in has evaporated into smoke in the blink of an eye. It's gone. It's over. It's done. And you get nothing in return for your devotion. As Forrest quoted in his memoir, Fools, your reward is neither here nor there. Thanks for watching everyone. I know this video will be controversial, but it's something I feel I needed to say. Take care and I'll see you next time on Adventures for the Curious.